everybody. This is the Coffee with a Geek program. It is January of 2022. So this is my first guest of this year. Happy to have uh, Silky Vias today. And she's coming from China. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But let me just give you the briefest of briefest introductions. But it's kind of hard because Silky has done a lot. So Silky Vias is presently the EY and the PYP ICT. There's a lot of uh, initials there. We'll find out hopefully what those are about. She's a coach and head of information services at Shenhui International School in Shenzhen, China. She's one of the board members of Senia Special Education Network and Inclusion Association, the Shenzhen chapter. She is an ISTE certified educator and has more than 13 years of teaching experience in international baccalaureate schools. She collaborates with teachers to integrate technology and information fluency skills into the IB curriculum. She coaches the classroom and specialist teachers to use technology to create, adapt, and personalize learning experiences for all students and empower them as independent learners. She's passionate about new technology tools for making teaching and learning compelling, relevant, and importantly, with rigor. She is also keen on exploring uses of immersive and assistive technology tools that are meaningful, engaging, and interactive. So a lot there, a lot to discuss. So we'll try and dig right in quickly. But first of all, let's do what is your favorite cup of coffee? Nescafe Gold is my favorite cup of coffee. <laughs> awesome. So Silky, that was a lot to digest in your introduction. You've had a lot of experience. Can you, in your own words, kind of tell me your educational journey, your background, uh, yeah, so basically, like I've been teaching at international schools, which are mostly IB schools, uh, and uh, I am uh, coaching teachers, I'm training them uh, to integrate technology into the IB curriculum, because like it, it, it works very differently from other curriculum, it's inquiry based learning. So we do have lots and lots of opportunities to actually uh, integrate technology meaningfully for like a showcasing understanding, accessing information and a lot of other things. So are you working with students, teachers, or both? That's my primary job. Yes, I am. I usually like work with one to one with teachers. I have many coaching cycles with them. I do have team meetings and I coach the teams. But at the same time, if there is something which uh, I need to show it to the students. It's uh, the teachers can book me and I can go in the classrooms or they come to my maker space. And that's how like we collaborate and uh, we make uh, our students successful in uh, using technology. Wow, that sounds really innovative and creative. Do, is that how you feel about it? Uh, yes, uh, uh, that's the best part of my job, actually, that uh, I am able to even work with students wherever it's required. And I'm able to like show the teachers how they can actually uh, work with technology without the fear of like, oh, I have to lead the lesson. But when I'm leading, uh, the teachers learn, understand, and from uh, they're empowered to use it on their own next time. It's really fascinating and it's similar to my job, but... Can you tell me uh, about your school and how you ended up in China? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I have uh, basically like my uh, very basic education is a science uh, graduation. So I am a zoology honors graduate. That's That was my first degree, but uh, I never pursued a master's in that because I was more interested in information sciences. So at that time, like computers were picking up in India and there were lots and lots of good computer institutes. So I did my diploma in information and systems management where, where I learned like programming and all that stuff. We moved from DOS to Windows. So I, I'm talking of that time. <laughs> yeah. And, so long back, long back people like I, I, I don't know how many people uh, these days actually know how DOS works and how do you use commands in DOS. But that was the time like I, I got really interested in uh, technology. Uh, then I moved to uh, I got married. I moved to Mumbai and then I thought of working at schools because that was my primary passion. 
Uh, so I, I wanted to do a bachelor's in library information science. After bachelor's, I did my master's in library and information science and started working at uh, international schools because uh, because there, library was the learning hub and a lot of innovation, a lot of research was happening. And that was a great place for me to be. Uh, there, I really wanted to, again, pursue my passion for technology integration. In my second year here, uh, due to some reasons, I'm, I'm also the head of uh, information services. So it sounds like you've had a lot of different educational roles, which has kept you very busy. It does. And uh, when I was in Mumbai, I was really looking, as I was working with international schools, I was looking for an international exposure uh, where I could actually go outside of the country and work in a different environment because I, I was keen to know a different culture. So this was a good opportunity. When I applied for the position, like we had, the pandemic had not hit uh, that hard and it was easy to travel. But as of now, yes, it's, it's a difference. Uh, scene, but uh, yes, Shenzhen is a beautiful sail. Oh, I, I really love it here. So Silky, tell me, what are some of the technology trends you're following right now? And what are some of the trends you see on the horizon? All right. Uh, I'm very passionate about uh, like technology uh, for uh, designing in such a way that we uh, we keep in mind the learner variability, because if you see in each classroom, we have different kind of learners. And my idea is like, how can we really use technology to reach out to every learner? So I, I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot of work with UDL, as I'm also working with kids uh, uh, with uh, like... Uh, uh, special needs and all. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Senya uh, chapter. So I really look for like assistive technology. And we, we know that assistive technology is there. Like we have Microsoft immersive readers, we have uh, iPad assistive technology, but how to really use that in the classroom? Because uh, the teachers need to be trained in such a way that the tools so like how can we use the technology in such a way that each learner is able to like is empowered enough to actually use the tool according to his or her needs so that is my idea that like uh, it should there should not be any kind of barrier in learning and I know everyone around the world is striving towards reaching out to each and every individual in the classroom so that is what I hope to see so I'm really following the artificial intelligent trends uh, following the AR VR trends how they are used uh, in the classroom uh, to really help um, all learners so proactively designing for learner variability using technology is what I really am passionate about. You mentioned VR, which is an interest of mine as well. Where do you see VR heading as far as education goes? All right. So earlier when VR came, we were like, uh, really the kids were like passive consumer doing Google Expedition. We were doing merge, we were doing all of it, but so good at creating VR. It really is helping them or uh, help their friends learn something. Right now, we, we're not allowed to go for any virtual field trips. I think VR is a great way. Oh, in, in grade three, they were planning to go for a field trip, but like the, it got canceled because of the new virus. So now, okay, we have VR headsets. Okay, let's plan a field trip. Let's uh, do a 360 degree city. Let's, let's do something. So I think it has got great potential if um, it's trained well. What, what I see is the kids know it so well because they're playing games with it. They do play games and they are, they are aware. It's just that like shifting that focus from just being consumers to creators, uh, maybe a, a good way of moving forward. This is like what I feel. I think in at least here, it seems like VR is still a little far off. Specifically, something like Oculus requires a Facebook account. You can't really make you know school-based accounts yet. So I think those are some challenges. What are your thoughts? Right. So uh, when 
I was like uh, buying my VR headsets at my earlier school. Definitely, we use Oculus uh, Quest. Uh, but uh, here at this school, like, uh, anyways, like being in China is challenging because data protection is a big thing here. And uh, we obviously, like, we have to follow data protection laws and rules here. So uh, we uh, we zeroed down. Like I had like uh, I looked at a lot of VR headsets. They are very easily available in China because Shenzhen is the technology city. But still, we got uh, class VR headsets which are specially designed for educational needs. The content is uh, designed. And you, you can control it uh, with your computers. You have like, think like I, I had to, because I know uh, it's not as great as Oculus, but at the same time, it's really fulfilling the needs of my uh, students. So I, I'm very happy with class VR and, and the content they have. So we had to like uh, look into a lot of it and then sure. zero down on. Yeah. So you've adapted to that. Okay, that's yeah. that's really interesting. So can you tell me a little bit about the international school and its curriculum? And here we have like all the international teachers. So they have taught in different environments. But when the basic pedagogy is of inquiry, we, we are doing the same things. We're following, uh, of course, like at my earlier school, they were, it was an American school. So they follow different standards like NGSS for science. But here we are following IB uh, standards for science. But but that's OK. But um, there, there's, there's not much of a difference maybe because it's is the curriculum is same sure. and both the schools are truly international so um it wasn't a, a, a shock for me oh this is so different and mm -hmm. i think um technology wise both the schools are equally good this school of course is uh, has a lot of technology my earlier school also had like uh, it, it was like uh, amazing resources so i i, I feel like i i'm lucky enough to be working at schools which are like, which are amazing with technology and maker spaces, which I really uh, look forward to working with the kids in. So we're now two years into a pandemic. What lessons have you learned and how has technology helped maybe overcome some of the obstacles of the pandemic? I know that's a big right. question. <laughs> It's, it's a very big question, but uh, at the same time, I have a very simple answer to this question. What I feel is it has taught everyone to be super flexible and adaptive because you never know what's going to happen next. We are right now, we have a break for Chinese New Year, but we are not very sure whether we are going to go back to school or we'll be doing online learning. So we have already made preparations. So the teachers and everyone is so flexible. We have two sets of planning right now. One is for online or one for regular school hours. So it's like everyone has become very adaptable everyone is flexible people know that overnight things are going to change uh, and at the same time when you talk about technology uh, how has technology changed it yes we've got loads and loads of technology tools but what i really feel is um the teachers we have to do personalized training for the teachers because the, all the teachers are not at the same level in using technology you have zoom you have so many inbuilt app in zoom but like do uh, are the teachers really equipped to use those tools how can they utilize them that's that's my biggest thing that yes we have all these tools, but do we are we providing enough support to the teachers because their well-being is very important. The teacher burnout rate around the world is like we all know what's happening to teachers because everyone is wanting to give their best uh, and it's it's overwhelming for the teachers actually. Yeah. So as I said, like my mantra right now is JOMO, joy of missing out rather than FOMO, because like we've done FOMO for a very long time. The teachers always feared, oh, I'm not doing this. But now I think less is more. We have to just stick to what we have, train them well, and then use use technology to like go ahead with what whatever <laughs> like the environment gives us these days. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. You summarized that really well. And I think we're going through the same um, challenge here. So nice, nicely put. So tell me your best success story this year or, 
over your career? Um, you know, like oh, there's no particular particular story uh, as such which I can tell you but whenever like a teacher is able to use technology successfully in a classroom a child is able to create something showcase his understanding I think uh, that is uh, that is success for me if someone is able to access the material the teacher is trying to tell them using some of the features provided in their laptop or their iPad I, I feel that is success for me but yes we do have uh, opportunities uh, in IB where our, our, our kids actually do a PYP exhibition. So there uh, they use loads and loads of uh, tools right from like collaborative tools because they're working in collaboration with other kids. Uh, they, they, they are creative communicators. They use amazing tools to communicate their ideas. So uh, Mentimeter they use. Padlets, they use wakelets, they use like everything uh, in one presentation. Uh, they, they made a Bunsi presentation. They had uh, those quizzes coming on and everything. And then they created like uh, virtual reality and augmented reality in co-spaces. So people could actually like look at their uh, creations using the merge cube. So, so that is what I, I feel uh, really happy about when the kids are able to like consolidate everything, whatever they have learned and present it to an audience, which is really important for them because it's, it's, it's their exhibition time. Okay, now it is time for the Speed Geek questions. These questions are kind of short and to the point, and they're maybe a little bit more whimsical, shall we say. So the first one is, what is your favorite educational blog? Okay, uh, my favorite educational blog is not one, I have two, two, three, one, one is Alt of Pedagogy, Shake Up Learning, and then blog articles by Leslie Fisher and Ditch the Textbook by Matt Miller. So I, I do follow a lot of them, but I think these are my favorites. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring up Leslie Fisher. I just saw a presentation at our local NiceGate, NiceGate uh, conference, and it was probably one of the best ed tech presentations or keynotes that I've seen. Uh, she's really amazing. She's my friend. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, everybody's I friend. Her. I think. <laughs> she's. she's it's so good. She met me at a station in uh, Trenton uh, in New Jersey. And then like, it, it was so amazing. Yeah. She really is a fantastic person. But, uh, a fantastic person her presentation and, and, was so good. And, and I think really what you said, like her personality comes through in her presentations and it's kind hearted and fun. And um, yes, yeah, she's a wonderful person. She is. So, okay, so educational blog. What's your favorite social network? I think I know the answer to this one, but. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to mention you are at uh, S or Silk J, right? At Silk J yes. for Twitter. All right, so yes. make sure you follow. And that's how we connected. That's how I connect with most yes. of my yes. uh, guests. Um, so let's talk about, are you a gamer? And what's your favorite game, even if it's just an app on your phone or anything like that? No, I'm not a gamer, actually. <laughs> I'm not. Like, I, uh, I wish I was gaming, but somehow, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a gamer. Okay, so even on VR, nothing you're... Uh, uh, yes, uh, sometimes on VR, but but I'm not, like, yeah, I'm, I'm more on, like... The, as I said, the creation side, like I, I just can't consume what others cre have created. Of course, people have done such amazing job on everything, but but for me, I, I, I'm too restless. So <laughs> I, I think I'm, I, 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 I think I'm all yeah. I know. All right, we'll go with one more, and this is kind of an un, un technology one. So, what's your favorite way to unplug from technology and kind of get away? Um. I take a walk or I run uh, on the Shenzhen Bay. So that, that's a way, like, I just uh, get away from technology. That's my best way. 
uh, our school has an amazing campus, so we can go around, run on the campus. There's a track, track, uh, sports field. We can go there. So that there are a lot of ways. So it's it's just getting out. Great, awesome. That sounds like a good good plan. And I like the way of just starting off in the morning of kind of getting away from it all and, uh, you know, yes. getting yourself in that good frame of mind to take on the day. So exactly. Well, Silky, it was a true honor to meet you uh, virtually from across the miles and you're doing great stuff and I'll continue to keep in touch and follow what you're doing because you're doing great things. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. All right. It I'm was gonna... a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice okay. day.